Today, we are playing a brand new scary game. Killer Frequency is a first person horror puzzle. Oh. Not the puzzle game. Okay, here we go. Oh God. Nocturne Alley. Where the f am I? It's just jumping right into it. Oh, is this really scary, guys? Where am I? Clock. Hello? Hello? Oh, let me move over. My God, my heart's racing. Ah! Girl, what do you want? <laughs> ah! Oh my God, that scared me so bad. Oh my God. Get out of here. You hear something, Peggy? Huh? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yell. What? Or, <laughs> I don't know. What? <laughs> How? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is. But I mean, does Gallows Creek have a straight cat? Problem Hello? Not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? What's going on here? We have to do these checks every time. And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment for each show. And he pays us Who to are you? pre-flight check. But oh, is that me? you're sure you don't want to. I feel like I'm looking at myself. Wait, who am I? Let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Who? Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Got it. Okay, you're live in three, two... 189.16. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and Hi. you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, <laughs> I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Okay. Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm gonna play you a scream. Okay. Then you call and Guess that scream. Is he having breathing troubles? We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Hey, what do you mean, play the tape? I just have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you What yesterday. tape? This one? Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a... Did I put the tape idea. in? No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest. And you're the one at the mic. Oh, am I screaming? Are you serious? I won't do it. I hate what I've become. I used to go out all across America and why not? I love to scream. screaming into a mic in a backwater town. Jesus. Come on, Forrest, just do it. Come on, Forrest. Let's do it. Am I gonna scream? Oh God. Ready? Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away ready? there for a second. I'm ready. Listen close. And then call in to guess, guess that, that scream. scream. Oh, well, here goes nothing. Ooh, the perturbed Yeti scream, the falling from cliff scream, or the drowning scream. Let's do the drowning scream. Yep. Ah! <laughs> that wasn't actually a scream. Well, folks, 
There you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Wow, he hates his job. Fried dough. Just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guest. Oh, God, Forrest. That was amazing. She wants to f*** Forrest, I fear. Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? Lighten up, Forrest. That's going to be the highlight of my week. <clears throat> okay. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Time to turn the music off. Why is she acting like I'm slow or something? Time to turn the music off. <laughs> Welcome to 189.16 The Scream, caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 oh. operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Oh, uh, slow night? Well, Leslie. I guess it must be a slow night for crime if you've got time to call in. What can we do for you? Slow night? Forrest, I found a body. I need help. Why me? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not gonna be happy if this is a prank. I don't Why do you do need our help? Aren't you the police? Shows. It's in my contract. I hate them. Forrest, They're so I useless. I really don't think this is a prank. <laughs> Are you serious? Leslie, I'll level with you. I find this hard to believe, but I'll hear you out. What exactly How do I throw is this? going on? Sheriff Matthews is dead. Oh, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and I found him. Yeah, oh, so you're God. telling us Poor this Sheriff on the radio. <laughs> do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Right. Someone got up very close, and I really don't want to say what they did to him. Girl, this is not the hospital. Back. I don't know. And you're live. I think he tried. <laughs> He's surrounded by bullet casings. Ooh. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Um, is there anyone else? Where are the other officers? I don't, I don't understand. Where are the other officers? Do they know? Have they secured the scene or, or whatever cops are supposed to do? Let's no, turn that bitch up. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. A little background music. Right after I found her. God, wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three. But Officer Gunderson is on leave in camp. Leslie, do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone why over to the Why is this happening on I our try, live show? But I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself. Let them know what's going on and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, Girl, put who's your gonna man the emergency on? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. Why? Late night lurkers? I like that one. Why me, bruh? I'm a radio talk show host, Leslie. I talk to idiot people about their idiot ideas. I'm not a 911 operator. Why me? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around Oh, there's something here. wrong with their phone lines? You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Okay. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at Okay, so I'm interviewing them? From Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Well, let's have some on-the-job training right now. What? I have an emergency. This is so dumb. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. 
There's gotta be another way in. Um, I have no idea, girl. Find another set of keys, like... There's gotta be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Big brain girl. Um, check the officer's desk, doll. Have you looked around the officer's desks? That's the first place I'd check. That was the first place I'd check, too. I couldn't find anything useful, though. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he... You know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but... I didn't really look up close. One second. Okay, girl. Oh, I think I might be sick. And in the Sorry, meantime... Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Oh. Hey, hold on, where's my, where's my role-playing? Where's my role-playing headphones? She got the I, I, th I think I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Hey, we do did the it. Work? They do. Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? How am I feeling? I'm quitting KFM, this is a prank. I, I swear to God, Peggy, if this is some sort of joke, I'm leaving this town. I've never heard of anything like, like this. Yeah, this is some small town I've bullshit. I've never heard about anything like this either. But we're here now, Forrest, and we've just got to see what happens next. Come on, Martinez. There we go. But honestly, like, of I'm course he had keys on him. In your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. Um, uh, we're on our own? You mean we're gonna be on our own? Just Peggy and me, and no one else, responding to emergency calls. You'll be fine. You and Peggy just work together like you did <laughs> You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh! What? My car! My car is on fire! What's it with this place? What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? No. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! What's that noise? We got it all out on Jimmy Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn Dog, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam. mask? How the hell is he? Oh, who? what's happening? The Whistling Man. The Whistling Man? Who's the Whistling Man? Yeah, who is he? He was a serial killer back in the Ooh, stab in the night. Period. But he's dead. He's... What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way! Um... Lock the doors! Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Quick time events! Quick time events! Shit, we need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think! Um, run for it! We need to run for it. The whistling man might break through the door. We can't run for it. Deputy Martinez. Oh, that is so true. She would be hauling a dead body. Run to Henderson on foot? There should be police crews. I don't at fucking the know. Office, like, right? why are you asking me? Take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me Wait, we need something more sinister. Uh, just reach into your pocket there, Deputy, and. Yes, got him. Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But wait. How am I supposed to get us to the car? Girl, I have no idea. The whistling man is right there. Um, take the gun? Deputy Martinez surely carries a gun, right? Could you use that? Deputy Martinez's gun. Hi, Erica. Missing. I guess the whistling man must have done something with it. 
The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I... Oh, shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. Um, is there a, is there other weapons? Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, Why are we still on the phone with her? Uh, I'm not understanding it. Belt. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. Peggy. 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 Take the pepper spray. The pepper spray should be easy to use and carry. Take that. Got it. She's on the phone, carrying a dead body and trying to pepper spray someone. I don't think that's how that works. Do you hear that? No. 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 I, I can't hear anything. I'm too busy DJing it up. No more knocking. Um, can you still see the whistling man? You said you could see the whistling man earlier. Can you still see him? Let me take a look. No. I don't see him anywhere. But I can see the car. Squad car three. It's right there. Okay. Deputy Martinez? Okay. If you can hear me, it's time to move. Just lean on me. <sighs> yep. There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. <laughs> Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. Period. Huh. Speak to you soon. Bye! Good luck, Leslie. That's one brave woman. God, I hope she makes it through this. You know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Right? Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. I've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. Over, Mama! That's a big 10-4 there, good buddy. I, I'm guessing you made it to the car then? Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! Leslie, what's happening? Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! Oh, Not he's wearing a mask. mask. Uh oh. No. She's gonna be dead, huh? I killed that bitch, huh? Was not thinking. Was too busy playing the tunes. Get in there! Leslie, what are you waiting for? Get out of there! Martinez! God damn it! I'm sorry. Leslie. I'm sorry. I don't know! Forrest. He slit her throat. Oh. You need to get to Henderson, Leslie. We can't let this happen again. Peggy's right. We've all got our part to play now. How long do you think it's going to take to get help? Oopsie! Gallows Creek is a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. We'll do our bet. Well, you better floor it. You keep that pedal <clears throat> to the floor then. We'll see when you're back. Thank you. I'll be back as fast as I can. Right. All right. Both. I. God damn it. I need a minute. I'll be out of range soon. I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Try not to crash. Try not to crash. <laughs> we, uh, we need you back in one piece. Good luck, Leslie. <sighs> oh. Oh, this is a this is a map. Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. We're going to get back to the show meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind or have any information about this whistling man character, then give us a call. Oh. We'll talk here on 189.16. Peggy!
screen. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. Period. Let's go. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Peggy, what are we gonna she do? Did you say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill half the town in four and hours. And there's no police. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall who killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. Oh, a dozen? No reason for it. No motive. He just... Um, okay, so what happened to him? Okay. What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. The police uh, cornered this him night? and he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is he's biding his time. Waiting to take revenge on the town. Revenge! Right, that's the story. But what's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. B bitch, I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35. 35 people? That's how many people 35. watch my stream! It's 3,500. Oh. Well, I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people. <laughs> at That's how many about you bitches are here. 35 at best? We only have 35 listeners. Are you serious? We only have 35 listeners? 35, yeah. It's a school night. How many did you get before? You know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah, before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big Gas could pump that up to 10, Ooh, 15. Ooh, he was easy. popular. 5,000 on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Million? Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet. Well, we're gonna get killed. Yeah. I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. Okay, okay. for us. Shut the music off. You mean turn it up? When you're ready, shut the music off. Shut the f up. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? <sighs> Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? No, you hang up! Okay, what's your name and why are you calling in? Oh! Accept requests? Do you accept requests? I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Uh, maybe <laughs> you must make a sacrifice to us. A sacrifice to us? Why does he sound like he's in a call center? I, I mean, me. Bro, this man's a troll. Off. Boom. Not yet. I want to deal with them. Not yet. I want to deal with them. Uh, we also want a mega goal. You little shits. You're little shits. You know that? There's been death tonight. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> man, suck it, old man. Gallows hide for one. Woo! For anyone just tuning in, 
We do, in fact, have an actual killer out on the streets tonight. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. Late night hey, lurkers. What the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks. Wait, to be this is a jam. Pretending to be this whistling man character. They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. We already have another caller on the line. Ooh. All right, let's do this. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed nine one one. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for nine one one tonight. What's your name, and what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. Well, good thing we're not the cops. Uh, the cops aren't coming. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? Oh, God. Yeah, like, why didn't, what, like, the fire department... I drove to the edge of town for a jazz run, and now some psycho <laughs> dressed like the whistling man is after me. Like, hospital, fire, out. firefighters... Oh, it's actually happening. Some type of first responder. First of all, what's a jazz run? You went out for a jazz run? What, what is that? <laughs> what is it? It's jazz running, baby. <laughs> and I got my butt all the way back to my car before I got splashed. <sighs> but I dropped my keys somewhere along the way. Uh oh. I never locked the door at least, so I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. Um, is there anywhere else you can go? Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Well, I'm not going back out there. I... <gasps> oh, shoot. Oh, he's back. <gasps> Look, I don't know a thing about cars. Uh-oh. But I gotta start this engine without the keys. And you're gonna have to help me. Yeah. Wait, 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 I don't... Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. <sighs> You're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash, your friendly neighborhood radio host. Mechanic. Go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. So, go down the hallway and do what now? Oh, okay, this is like kind of a swanky ass. The office? Wait, what am I supposed to be looking for? There's a wrench. Full color nuts and bolts. This has to be it. Let's see if it's this one. Okay, chat's telling me to go to the poo-poo room. Why? <gasps> What's this? This looks useful. Oh. Oh. You find anything? Yeah. Yes. I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. How do we start this, baby? It says, use the screwdriver as a key. I... I... Oh. Okay. The screwdriver's too fat to fit. What next? Um... That. Unscrew the steering column. All right. Just turn. Just turn. One, two. Okay. Covers off. Look. There's a bunch of wires down here. Uh oh. Open. Oh god, my heart is pumping. Tell me what you see. Tell me exactly what you see. Okay. I can do this. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and a brown wire. <sighs> Okay, what's the serial number? What's the serial number <laughs> on the steering column? The number is 576-894-320. Did anyone get that? If there is a four before a three and no seven. Okay, there is a seven. If there's six anywhere, it doesn't start with five. Yes, if there's a zero at the end. If there is zero at the end and the three doesn't come before six. Okay, I think it's that last one. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Now strip the purple wire. Strip the purple wire brush against the twisted wires? Yeah. 
Just there we go. The purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Okay, okay. We strip and we brush and. <gasps> Whoa! Oh! Yeah, yeah, buddy! Fantastic work, baby! Let's go! Anytime you want to come down to the jazz studio, you get in for free. Thank you! Just keep driving. You just keep driving now, okay? And get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, babies. Thank you, Peggy. We did it, Forrest. Yeah! Sure Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. Take it away, Forrest. Infrastructure and make Gallows I Creek a good place to raise a family. Like Unlike Creek current mayor, Linda Cartwright, what Teddy do you Gallows mean? Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. Creek is a miserable our... place to live. Uh -oh. Really? Miserable? Peggy, be honest. Peggy, be honest. It's a dump. There's nothing to do here. Hell, I'm almost ready to thank this whistling guy for at least making things interesting. Well, I like it here. People are polite and... Uh, come on, there must be something you like about this place. So, you don't notice the stinker after a after while. After a while, you don't even notice the smell? I guess that's nice. <laughs> smell? She's anyway, used to the stench. I hope the killer is done for the night and that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. 12.42 a.m. Loving the font. Caller on line one. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, <clears throat> The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty. Hello, Brian Ponty. What have you got to say about what's happening? Oh, I'm so sad that Deputy Martinez didn't make it. Oh. I saw her a lot over the years. Okay, we have an Irishman. Pizza. It's just terrible. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to thank you for doing your best. So, I'm sending you some coupons you. for free pizza. Here again. Ponty's Pizza. Just a little something to look forward to when all this blows over. Wow. This is Brian literally Ponty, Irish or Scottish. Ponty's pizza. That's really good of you. But you really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck. Because we're always running great deals that'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you. The pizza we have is to die for. Oh, 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 no, 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 our famous beer and pizza deal. Bro, Wait I'm so minute. bored. Hello? Come, Come on. Come on to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. Bro, forget Peggy, hang up on him. It's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. Not Ponty's Pizza just followed. You're freaks. Do you have to play a cassette? Yes, I've been playing them all fucking night over all the songs. Our neighbor. Oh. And he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes Who the in fuck the is this? Dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Take what is this right-wing propaganda Gallows in Gallows Creek? Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. God, what a jackass. 100% grade-A asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, oh, they're getting political now when there's a killer on the fucking really? loose. No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Oh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. 
Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. Welcome to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from The Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and... Uh-oh. Wait. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Leslie ain't here. Um, Leslie left me in Leslie's charge. Leslie's driving to Henderson right now. She left me in charge. Why on earth is Leslie... Oh, never mind. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. We're live on the air! Just tell me what happened! Never mind that. Tell me what's happening there. You said there's been a break-in? That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. <gasps> Dressed as the whistling Not the man. whistling man. Teens. They get worse every year. And this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. And now he's back. Maurice, I don't know what's going on, but he's back. The whistling man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. <laughs> Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Right. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Can you get out of there? Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as shit hope so, kid. Oh. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. Blocking the stairs. Blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out. You're gonna have to jump That's through the window, right. sir. And it would take me a You're good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. Yeah, we, me, Peggy, me. Oh, I'm the only one doing shit around here. Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? <gasps> They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms with different extensions. Peggy, you're just a woman. So we call Sit one down. of them. Draw the killer away. And buy Maurice time. Buy Maurice time. That could work. Exactly. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Yeah, sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... <sighs> you realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? For that to be successful... You know what's you're stupid. You're gonna need every phone extension. Plus... A plan of the entire office floor. Is this? All delivered while the killer is on roof. Greek Harvest Festival. I got it. He is Thank bad. God, I've always been we got it all out pressure. on Giblet Field. Don't we go got on. the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Corn Hole, Corn of the Cobb, Broken Old Country Music, Can Jam. Go check your fax machine. Fax? Don't let me down. Where's the fax machine? Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the facts from the machine. Easy. Oh. This must be it. Oh. I got it! Yes, bitches! Mr. Russell? You, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my facts? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks. We're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling now man. Now what? Here's the situation. Okay. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. Okay. And now he's in the office next door. Okay. It's now or never. 
Okay, so what do I do? Yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Wait, I didn't Again, listen! We want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. Oh. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension Where is Maurice? Is Wait a minute, should we call the editors? You want to draw away from the boardroom? So maybe the editor's office? I feel like it has to be editor's office. Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? You need to go to the archives. So then you can leave from the archives out to the stairs, right? Do I have a sneaking feeling at all? Do I have a secret suspicion? Do I have a fleeting thought in my mind that will be entering very soon? He'll see him walking down the hall if he's in the editor's room. So he'll go to the kitchen? Sure. You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah, that makes sense. Go I don't know. somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. Good plan, Peggy. It's all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then I don't know, bitch. I move, I'll call when I get there. Right. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> bitch, I don't know. But now what do we do? We play some tunes. We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. Oh, true. We gotta think of something else. I don't know, yeah. bitch. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. Good. I gotta give you credit for that. So we're in the I've kitchen now? Uh, right. Let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Okay. Exactly. Uh, I can move the furniture out of the way. But not quickly or quiet. Can you lock him in a room? Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulation say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait. No. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? Now's not the time, Peggy! Peggy, I don't think now's the time Fucking to be playing around. idiot! Around. I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only oh. the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there. Because he's already I in the editor's in. office. Can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh. We're going to uh -oh. need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. Mm. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. Mm. That might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? This needs a little background music. What he calls his work radio. It should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. Period. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. Get the radio, plant it in the secret archives, lure the killer, and... Oh! Call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Thanks, Nash. Peggy. Hello? Nash, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio! It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. 
I'm just gonna turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Maurice, turn the volume down! Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Uh, yeah, oh my yeah, god, that I was quick. That. I almost lost I that. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Uh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Who the fuck is Hopkins? Wait. Ah, oh, god damn it. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead! Good you point. Just... Oh, that's a good point. But wait, we're the radio. We can just be quiet until you're ready. Uh, Hell yes! If you can do that, then... Yeah, sure. 189.16. I know that's Ooh. your station number. But a good editor always double checks. Can you confirm that? No, it's 189.16. 189.16, The Scream. Gallows what if I just went? Best and only phone in talk show with me, Forrest Nash. And me, Peggy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Wait, everyone, shh. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? Oh, shit. Probably the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? Hmm. Let's me have a tink. Yes. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay. Calling Come the board right now. I'm nervous. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? Bomba Clot! I'll give fake advice. I'll pretend to tell Maurice to hide in the secret archive. The killer will hear me, go check it out, and we've got it. Oh, I like that. Make the killer think he has the upper hand, and then BAM! I appreciate the vote of confidence. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. Radio set up in the secret archive. Period. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I've got a big cabinet, but... Uh... That'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment has kept me alive so far now. Where can he hide? What do you reckon? He said, this is too far, this is too far. He you can see this, so I guess in the cabinet. Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well, this is it. Here we go. I'm going to go turn the radio up to Girl, just blast. go! Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Wait, am I not supposed I to think say anything? You should be safe now, Forrest. It's going oh, to be Oh, was I right. supposed to say something? Don't look for you there. I <gasps> Shit. promise. And Mr. Russell, be quiet. It's important you make no sound. Quick, Mr. Oh, Russell. Oh yeah, I was hide supposed to be silent. Office. Sorry, I couldn't figure out what what was going on. Oh, I did it. Listeners this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We've just locked up the Whistling Man. <gasps> Do we do it? Forrest, you beautiful bastard! <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked! Frankly, neither can I, because I would have definitely honest, got that wrong. I can't believe it either. Thank God it's over. I'll be off now. Gotta get out of here. Write up a few notes. Call a few friends. I feel 
feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview tomorrow for the Gallows Reporter. I'll think about it. I'll see what tomorrow brings. Period. I'll take that as a yes. Talk to you soon. Bye. There we are, folks. The Whistling Man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. And play some killer tunes. Looks like the night should be pretty easy from here on out. Right? Thank uh -oh, God. Uh-oh, something tells over. me it's not over. I guess we got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time. You're gonna interview me. Oh. Are you sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now. And you're still all shrouded in mystery. Maybe I like being a mystery. Did it occur to you that maybe I like being a mystery? That was smooth. That Too was smooth. Bad. Question one. Tell me about your family. No, Peggy! But, come on, Peggy. That, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move <laughs> with you to Gallows Creek? Your mother! Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I just do this on the radio. I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Forrest. Don't be sorry, I'm not. Don't be sorry, I'm not. Oh. Oh. Anyway, what about you? That Any sounds siblings? like repressed Your trauma. Mom and pop still around? <laughs> I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making sorry, a I'm conversation done. now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh. What? Oh? <laughs> oh. They fell down. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck. Well, that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad. She even made me take my stepdad's last name. Hi, Peggy! So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day and... My mom didn't last long oh after Oh my god, went. they're both dead? I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. Ooh! I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Who called Any you Peg? Siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. What? Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. <gasps> What on earth could someone want at this hour? I don't know. Do you want to go check it out? No! I can't leave the booth while we're on air. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Get down to the first floor, then check the door. There's a pillow on the roof for us. Fuck off, Peggy. Ew. What is this? Oh, it's like a little lounge. We go to the a first <gasps> tape. Play on air. Now, how do you put that through the door? Pegster, this is a nice little facility. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Yeah, y'all are crazy for that. Huh? Oh. Wait, I'm gonna play that again. Hold on one sec. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will so punish you. I'm gonna enjoy this. I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? I... Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Bye. Uh... Folks, the... Oh. <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how or why that came Who are we stuffing? Are we stuffing her? We're locked up, but be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us. 
on 911. So who are we stuffing? Hey, we had a call come in. Caller, you're on 189.16, The Scream, with... Ash! Shut up and listen to me! Mr. Russell? What's wrong? Are you okay? I said listen! He's gone! The whistling mm -hmm. man is gone! Ooh! So the one who left the cassette, he really did escape. You mean you knew he escaped? And you didn't tell me? We only just found out. We weren't even sure it was him. Mr. Russell, where are you now? What happened? Well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. I phoned some buddies, and we came back here to keep Why would you go back, bitch? Then what happened? I'm getting to that. Oh. We came back here. <laughs> Door was shut, just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks, and, well, there was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. They thought we could teach the freak a lesson. Bro, why'd you go back? Did you let him escape? Did you let him escape? Of course we didn't. I demand you retract that. All this on the air, too. But damn it, Maurice. Just tell me what happened with this plan of yours. This was not my idea. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. Oh. I braced myself and... Then... Then nothing. The room was empty. Oh. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure? It was still no way out of there. None. Maybe. I mean, I know it's crazy, but I if mean... he's back from the dead, then. <gasps> Don't be ridiculous, Peggy. Don't be ridiculous, Peggy. It would explain things. I mean, how do we know he's not? Mooney. 189.16. Whoa, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. <laughs> Dissect baloney. Look, I don't want anything more to do with this. I'm clearing out a dog. Bye, bitch. And I recommend you and everyone listening do the same. He seems really spooked. <laughs> Wouldn't you be if you got attacked by a serial killer? Who turned out to be a demonic spirit? He's not a demon, Peggy. Yeah, you're probably we don't know right. That. But what do we do now? 104 AM. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. Should I introduce a song? No. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. Why? Why can't your ass just walk in here? Dumb bitch. Oh, so I'm just out here, bitch? Fuck you. And my gore gets to swing wide open? Or try your call again. <laughs> Straight to voicemail? My god. Are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and this? probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. I'll be frank, I didn't want you as part What's of this thing. But Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash. Prior and current friendship, Gina. Forrest Nate, you alright? Don't worry about Gina, you know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. Who the I think fuck? Final Breath is my best Who work yet. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest. You know, Who? Roddy Snatcher? Who? Oh, uh, are we old friends? Yeah, Roddy and I are old friends. I love Roddy. I will always find you was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my God, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We, we can't write what Roddy and I. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to KFAM, not to me. 
Then it's gotta be downstairs at reception. This must be it. Oh! Final breath. All right, here we go. Here we go. Hey, did you get it? Yeah, Got bitch. It. Let's get this on the air. Ah! Oh. Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. I'm not hearing anything that is especially good. I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. Fuck you. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. Time to turn the music off. Fuck you! Evening, caller. This is Forrest I Nash. I hate her. Host of 189.16... The scream and tonight's 911. Okay, scandal. everybody, lock in. This is Murphy. <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Mm -hmm. uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son Fernando. He's free today, and man, being his daddy has Aww. changed my life. I've learned how to live, how to laugh. Aww. Most importantly. How to love. <laughs> Aw, happy birthday, Fernando. Wait, that's sweet. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. Right. You think you're tough, huh? Oh. Big man with a big knife, huh? Ruben, come face me, a true warrior at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. Uh-oh. Oh boy, this is a bad idea, Murphy. This is a bad idea, Murphy. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <sighs> and there, there he, he goes. goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. Mm-hmm. And until then. Anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Oh, commercial? Uh. You need to play a commercial cassette. I know, bitch. Do you seek ancient wisdom? Do you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? Right. Then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator. The discipline of the tarantula. The speed of the tuna. The poise of the scorpion. And the wisdom of the bullfrog. You buy today. Do people really buy this kind of thing? Don't pretend like you're not interested. I mean, I wouldn't buy them, but I might That one's going over there where I can't touch it. Yeah. I bet karate lovemaking sure is something. This girl wants to f*** uh, me so uh, bad. Yeah. <laughs> we got a caller. You know what to do. Okay, Forrest, shut the shut music up, off. Shut up, I know! Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> oh, great. This is a kid. Hello? Hello? Who is this? It sounds like a child. Are you okay? Do you need help? Are you okay? Do you need help? Forrest? He called me? Right. Jesus. Okay, listen, Collar. Don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So, you saved them? We did. Or? We, we, well, yeah. Sure. We okay. saved two out, uh, two okay. out of three. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, Collar? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Hi, Virginia. Breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. I won't. Okay. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm, oh, I'm, now why would he ask that online? Oh God. On the air? Can you run away? Can you run out back? No. What if he's outside? Wait. 
waiting for me. Oh, God. Can you hide? Maybe you can hide in your house? He'll find me. I know he'll find me. Okay, call a neighbor? Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house. Might as well Virginia, join them. What's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I, I can't... Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know. But... Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Um... Don't be a child! What if I said that? That's so mean. Come on, Virginia. Try to remember. I can't do this. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. Peggy, what places do takeout in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well, there's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree, and you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponty's Pizza. That's it, I think. Hmm. Let's get calling. All right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys order from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, Place an order and include a note asking them to call the station. Oh. There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. I hate this town. You know, it's things like this that make me hate this town. Complain after you save her, Forest. Got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything oh, food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. Why don't you come help me, you Thanks, dumb Peggy. fucking bitch? The fuck is down here? Is this the kitchen? Oh, God, this place is huge. Rooting through trash. <gasps> this is a new low. Ooh. Interesting offer. Nice! I found this! Wait, this makes me want pizza real bad. Hey, find anything useful? Uh... Am I supposed to just find one thing? Yes, I have. That's great! Are you ready to get back on the line? Yes. Let's make the call. When you're ready, shut the music off. When you're ready, suck my c Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Um, call Ponty's Pizza. Call Ponty's Pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take your order? Uh, frat man calling. Fratman calling. We're in major need of foods for dudes. Uh, may I take your order? Uh, um, I guess Slow Roast Pizza? Like. Oh, man. I got a frat to feed. I guess so Slow Roast? Give me that Slow Roast Pizza. Oh, a fine choice. But three I'm hours? Three hours. You sure? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Just give me the garlic bread. Can do. Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right Period. away. Thank you. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it Period. Done. The folks at KFAM are we just saved Virginia. I should really call them and let them know. And now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hey, 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 this is Fratman Parker. We got some garlic bread and a note to 
call this number? <laughs> yes! Bunker! This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And... Is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? <laughs> this is such a goose prank. Um, it's not a prank. Is he gonna believe Forrest, or, he's, or is he gonna believe Duck Duck Goose? I feel like I should say this is Goose, so he'll believe that this is Goose. Sure, whatever, it, it's Goose. Now, listen, I... Goose, dude, get your ass to the party. We got so much beer! Uh, listen, I need you to... Goose, uh -oh. come get beer. Your brothers are waiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. Uh, how can I prove this to you? second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian! What do you think? <laughs> Great idea. Norman the Barbarian says only the radio man can control the tunes. So, play us the flow. The flow? Wait, really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, do okay. I have the I'll flow? play the damn song. Where's the flow? Oh, the flow! Oh shit! Okay, okay, radio man. Got Get it. My attention. What is it? Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house, all of you. Just say no more. Bunker's moving the house. Oh. Forest, line two. Hello. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Forrest, it's the killer. He's at the door, face. Oh my god, it's, it's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk, I promise. Whoa! The party has arrived! Oh, thank god. He's gone and... Oh! Oh, is that you, Radio Man? Don't worry. Another woman we saved. The beer. Good times are here. I could use a drink. Thank you, You're Forrest. welcome, Virginia. You're welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes. Some wear sheets as togas. Hey, Forrest. Did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Ooh. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. Ooh. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please Clive. call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Damn, another one? You're live on the stream with me, <laughs> Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find oh my god, this not the like a small horrifying. business owner. The killer roaming the streets of our fair town. Ooh, terrible. Terrible. <laughs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. Yes, I'm Forrest. Here at work in my small business. <laughs> it's a safe family-friendly place. Hmm, what small business do you own? Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, hmm. since you ask, it's Party's Pizza! <laughs> no way, not this fucker. In town. Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two-for-one God damn it, Party, no! No free ads! <laughs> We already have somebody else on the line. Here he Just is. take a deep breath and let's keep going. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. <laughs> I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze. Listening to your show, looking up at the stars, and oh, Miss Connections? For her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. We 
planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. Oh. To take our first journey together oh. into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Hmm. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming or wait and see? For real, kid? She might have gone Ian. You've been listening all night. Do you really need to ask Ooh. me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. I want to just go home. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. Oh! But, uh... Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on! I hear some rustling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! It'll take a little while to get here, but uh, thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. <gasps> oh, wait a second. Molly can't whistle. Molly can't miss whistle. No, no, this is supposed to be the best night Molly of my can't life. whistle. Not the worst. Oh, God. Do you know a way out? Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way. Shut first. up, Peggy! She's right! I... Listen, Eugene. Breathe. Hide. And call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. Molly can't Molly. whistle. Hurry! How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Okay. Why'd she change her mind? Why'd she change her mind? She went with that jerk Brad instead. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. She's the receptionist. Oh. Sits at reception. Barbara. Oh, Barbara. The maze maze. I'm scared. Is this where I took out of the trash Here earlier? Here's what I was Yeah, for. bitch, I knew it. I knew it. Any luck? Yeah, I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Uh -oh, Why is oh, this it is gonna be trash? hard. Uh, never mind. Oh, it this is gonna be right hard. Now. That's a question for Barbara later. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Eugene, you're back on air. <sighs> I'm Ooh. lost, Forrest. I just ran and I, I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad. Facing a tractor statue. Oh. There are hay bales one. painted gold on my right. He's by one. Needs to go left, I believe. Go left. Okay. Okay. I went left, then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me and a creepy rocking horse on my left. Okay, so he's right. He is. He is right by three. So he needs to go left again. He's got a pig statue in front of him. No, because if he goes left, he'll get stuck. So he needs to go backwards. He needs to go backwards. Go backwards. Oh God! Why didn't I just fight her over? Oh. I'm at a crossroads. Statue up ahead. Which way? Ahead. You need to go left. Yes, bitch, go left. Go left. I think I did it. I think I did it. Oh, Eugene. There's a tiny barn in front of me and a scarecrow behind me. Wait, what? Nothing to my side. So he's right by between six and seven and eight. Okay, I guess right then. Yeah, because if we went left, it'd be a dead end. So right? Go right. Wait, why am I nervous? I can't run much more. I just passed a cord and silo. Didn't see anything else. Nine? Oh. Please. Oh. 
way do I go? But which way is he coming from the corn silo? I think he needs to go left, right? I feel like it's left. Okay, chat is saying right, but I think it's left. We're at nine, but are, but which way are we facing nine? You're in the crossroads in front of nine? You've passed the corn silo. Oh, so it is, it should be forward then. Oh, I think it is right. Oh, it is right, it is right, it is right. You guys are so right. Go right. So thank you. So thank you, so thank you. That's on period. I'm out. And my bike's still here. Oh, thank you, Forrest. I love you, Molly. That was tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. <laughs> that is so mean. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Boo! Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Okay. Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, Collar? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. You got it? I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, ah. I don't think you're going to find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but... Uh, we don't have it anymore. Why what not? What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? Why? No, I... I why? threw it out the window earlier today. Why? Why? Uh, and why Peggy's did so you jealous. throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. Peggy is so jealous. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest What hour, is wrong with her? But I can only take so much. What do we do then? All right. So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Dawn. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. All the songs to request. Why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Shut up, Peggy. You wrote that song for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. Shut up, Peggy. <gasps> Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. A ru a ru a ru Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest. Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. Murphy. What's wrong? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. Oh. I, uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? I warned you not to. Hindsight is 2020, okay? Forrest, we need to do something. Goddamn piece of it. He came for the gallows waste disposal plan. Beat on me, man. Beat on him? Carry me inside of the oh, beat on him. Why did they get said beat on him? Light, but... Oh, oh, goddamn. I smell <clears throat> smoke. I think he's starting to fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, What man. are you supposed to do? I need someone here now or... I'm gonna die! Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. Now just... Come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. Can I listen to this? What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He... Oh, God damn it! 
first that evil son of a bitch God slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. What? We can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's old. Really old. Okay. I'll check the map. Yeah, this sound sucks ass. Oh, on the wall. Alex is on the corner of Haddonfield Road right next to Romero Street. Okay. Catherine lives at the west end of Myers Lake. Okay, so like over here. Old man Jericho lives at the east end of Myers Northeast of Myers Lane. Where is the waste disposal? Oh, we'd see who's closest to the waste disposal. It would be the old man. Oh. East side McCready Street will be closed from 2nd to the 9th of September for maintenance. Residents will be unable to access the connecting road between... Rogers Avenue and Haddonfield Road. So Rogers Avenue. Oh, so you can't go this way? Like what the hell? I'm a city planner now. Um, so we can't call the old man cause his road is closed. Wait, Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield right next to, oh, so he's right here. But you can't go to the waste disposal because the street is closed. Catherine lives at the west end of Meyer Street, northeast, southwest. So she's all the way over here, but her road is not closed. So I feel as though we are going to be looking at Catherine. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Um, that's gonna be a Catherine. Call Catherine. All right, give me a second. <laughs> They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Okay, and period. Call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine, are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... God damn it, I'm going in. No! Do you have your... Oh, my reception is terrible in here. God, my eyes stink. I want to say waste disposal, question mark? Go to waste disposal. Here, I... Oh, uh oh, oh fuck. It's coming down! Oh. I gotta go! Forrest! <coughs> oh, no. Listen! My boy. Oh, no! Give him a message. Who the fuck did that? My final words. Err, uh, that's not my thing. Ooh. Uh. It's not my kind of thing. Forrest. What the hell, man? Oh, oh, mother. Oh, oh God, Murphy. Poor Fernando is going to be crushed. I mean, what the fuck? I'm literally just a DJ booth. I'm literally just in the DJ booth. I'm literally just spinning records. His father died a hero. He was just trying to protect the town. That's actually pretty nice, Forrest. Murphy, I promise we will stop this. For you and for Fernando. Peggy, it's going to be our. Girl, put we your records on. Let's not waste time. Sorry, Peggy's mad at me. Fuck you. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek. Okay, period. During this awful time. Period. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. I know you're an outsider to our little Ooh. town here, Forrest. How do you know? But you're really stepping up to bat for us all You're tonight. welcome. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. Teddy, stop. Teddy, this isn't the time for your political ads. Stop. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, yeah, how do I hang up? which employs over 200 Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do 
have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? Your family's waste plant burned? Your family waste plant just burned down? So now we have nowhere to dump our garbage? The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and... You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Oh my god, he hates women! Half the town. It... Your producers Ooh, he hates a women. unstable too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Oh, he Cut hates women. Up, the moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. You got we'll it, Pegsters. Right after these uh, messages. Let's see. Let's pick from our floor, our floor collection. The world famous annual Gallows go. Creek Harvest Festival. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Corn Hole, Corn on the Cob, Croaking Hole, Country Music, I love Can Corn Jam, Dogs. Jam. Collar on line one. Hello, Collar. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Oh. Hello? Uh, hello. Collar. Who is that? This I'm me. Boris Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. Shit. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. Shit, that God sucks. Damn it. She's just a kid. Um, where are you? Where are you? Are are you somewhere safe? Oh my God. Oh my God. You stay with me, kid. Focus. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Focus. Uh -oh. Tell me, what's your name? Let's get it. Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Uh, Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're going to get you out of there. All right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. The old murder house? Upstairs. Where the hell is that? I'm at the end of a hall. Um, there's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Um, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like some of these are trick questions. Back in the closet you go, Carrie. Go to the closet. Okay, I'll... Poor closet, Carrie. <laughs> Of course, uh, I don't think we can fly. I, I want to say don't move. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> Raggedy, quiet breathing. Oh, no. Shut up, bitch. going on here <laughs> oh who's on the phone carrie the cops it's just a joke i'm about to quit Jeez. this game i'm about to quit this Wait, game isn't that jimmy that wasn't funny who the fuck is Sicko. jimmy of course i called the cops but, but some guy just answered instead what guy forrest nash what the hell are you all doing it's prank night old man the kid who called in earlier pretended who? to be the whistle i don't even man. remember that's it i'm out of here you're sick, Jimmy! Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Thank you. Uh, wait. Yeah. Oh, no. Who, uh... Who are you? Oh, no, man! <laughs> Get inside! 
Is this a prey? Run! Everyone, run! You two, what are you for? Scott Heather, you barricade the back. As long as he's out there and we're in here, we're safe, right? You bought time, but not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already. We have to the what? Cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house and. Uh, of course! The van! Oh god, here we go. Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Jimmy had them. <sighs> Jimmy. <sighs> go focus! Focus, stay focused, Carrie. Focus. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I'm here. L we'll Jimmy, L out. Jimmy. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just. Sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. <gasps> if we do that, we're gonna get killed. <sighs> if only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Who's Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Mm. Yes. Oh. She's my best friend and the smartest mm. one out of all of us. She mm. stayed in tonight. Go. Forrest, listen. Uh, we'll see what we can come up with and... Uh, mm. What? Scott, you're not any good at... Uh, and... No, no, Chad. What the fuck is going on? Us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We... Uh, we're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Me? Else, these idiots are gonna get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Oh. Me? Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. We do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why Peggy we is a hater. intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner. Oh my god, Peggy is literally such a hater. Alright. I'll she go hates see if I can women. Find her desk. Hopefully, she has something we can use. Hmm, was it in here? Was she in the, the mop closet? Was she over Jeez. here? Oh. They really tucked Jeannie away. Friendship quiz. Oh. Ah! This might work. What was that? Friendship quiz down. You find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, that's then a little corny. I'm not gonna enough. lie. Carries on line one. Whenever you're ready. Like, that is so fucking horny. I'm so sorry. Friendship quiz! This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes. We've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first hmm. step? Okay. First things first. We'll need a spotter. A spotter? Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. Okay. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. A climb. Most likely to peak Mount Everest. Wouldn't that be that? Wait, a climb. Most likely to be an Olympic athlete. It would be the athlete, right? Or would it be Mount Everest? Because Mount Everest is a mountain. Climb to the roof. It would have to be Hot David. Hot David. Hot David? I don't know if running up the roof is really possible. Oh. But I guess we'll see. Oh, well. Part two. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Pick the lock? Most likely to escape prison be Jennifer, so Jennifer. Jennifer. <sighs> Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? For coke? Anyway, that brings For cocaine? us to cocaine? Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll uh -oh. probably be easier that way. Then is part four. Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Uh-oh. Who was it again? Kyle, Cynthia, and Scott. Wait, wouldn't that be most likely to become an Olympic athlete? Oh, there's a back? It would have to be the Olympic athlete. It could be Hot David, no? Uh-oh. I don't think it's any of these people. I think we fucked up along the way. Uh-oh. Kyle. Shit. Exactly, Kyle. Your mom believes in you, and so do we. Ah! We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Part five. 
We tricked the killer into a trap. Someone could pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable lead? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Lisa or Tammy? Um, I'll just say Tammy. Tammy. Tammy, if you survive this, never do that British accent again. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Jimmy. Should it be? Who have we got? Most likely to pass the test without any error is Jimmy. Scott. Cynthia. Oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Oh, no. Oh, no. Jimmy ain't one of them. I fucked up. Cynthia. Oopsies. I, I didn't mean to clip that. Americans scared. Yes, I... Yeah. Just do what they do. Oh, it's raps. Yep. Uh. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves. And then it's go time. Sounds good. Oh, Talk it's raps. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty Shut good Shut up, plan. Peggy! I fucked up! <laughs> yeah, I think they're screwed. Well, let's hope you're wrong. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Hit it. Alrighty then. Uh oh, I'm scared. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Smarter. To the roof. Whoa, whoa, careful. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter signal. Spotter says go. Hit it. <laughs> Keys, Carrie, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. He got God. Oh, God. Focus! Just, uh, focus. Breathe. Breathe. Right. The Here we keys. go, bitch. believe in you. you. You can still do this. Don't give up, Carrie. Don't give up. Right. Right. We just gotta keep pushing on. Time to trap the killer. So everyone died? All right. Bait. <laughs> Get into position. Everybody else, hide. This sounds like a bunch of people there. Everyone's dead, y'all. Spotter! You need to climb down now! We gotta go! I put that on my mama. She saw that she's fucking right. Damn oh. it! Everyone to the bed now! Driver, I'll try better next time, guys. Anyways, time for a commercial break, guys. The world famous handheld shot. Got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamboree, Juggling.
Um, Carrie? <sighs> You're the chosen one, Carrie. Thank God you're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. You get home. You get home now, Carrie. Before he changes his mind. Right. I, I need to get home. I... So everyone else Carrie, died? You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. <gasps> oh, that's spooky. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. This seems so um, immoral. Go out to the parents whose kids won't make it home tonight. Yeah, right, Boris. Any... Hey, we had a call come in. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek Period, today. period, period. It's cool what you're doing, man. You're welcome. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about period. yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival. What? Tomorrow. There is a killer on the loose. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system. So, I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky. And I now consider you a friend, my man. Thanks, friend. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So, is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. <laughs> yeah. Back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway. Like, I don't care! Bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. Oh my god. I don't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk it's I'm sorry, is this was. therapy? Is this therapy hour? That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did Ricky. you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up. Trauma problems. dumping on the line. Sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Time to the bustle. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. Oh my God! Somebody, it's please get Roller Ricky a girlfriend. Somebody, that's the first step. Someone, please. Right oh, oh, a dog. Oh, hello, Max. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. <laughs> he's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now. A real pro. hello. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done. Hello. And then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Oh, is he gonna kill the dog? Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. He's a special boy. Maxie sounds like a really special boy. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons oh tomorrow. Oh my at the god. Festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, can I request a song got for me us? itching for a boogie. Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. What the fuck? It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it I'm down a little. I'm itching for a boogie! Uh, I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, I'm okay? itching for a boogie! Bye, Maxie! You got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song. 
the word. I really needed that call, you know, after After everything. we killed all those yeah, people. Yeah, get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it after we killed all those fucking people, somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, Collar? I'm doing okay. Oh! I made it home safe. It's Carrie. Carrie! Hey, I I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. What can I say? You know, even though not everybody made it. <laughs> and, uh, Oops. I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. <laughs> I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't. Fuck if why I know. I... Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? Like literally, fuck if I know. What he did. Why let me go? I don't know. He saw you as a victim. Like I don't fucking Maybe know. Maybe he didn't kill you because he saw you as a victim. Maybe. But why would that stop him from killing me too? After everything he did. To... These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay After he did to what? And rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. I don't think Thanks, so. Thanks, Hey, Forrest? After he did what to what? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And... Who the fuck is Thank that? Thank you. I don't think this I have... This next oh. one goes out to Carrie. Do I emote in this? You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. What, girl? About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. <laughs> You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Ooh. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Not our sneaky link. Still, I'm... Um, I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. Try sneaky you said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Oh, your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Yes. Oh, well remembered. Ooh. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know... The one that Peggy said she threw <gasps> outside the window? How did she know that? We weren't on the air when she said that. Um, what's going on? But we don't have that song. As you just said, Peggy threw it out the window. But, Forrest, you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside. Oh, she's right behind me, isn't she? Ah! I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. But shut the fuck up, Don! Holy fuck! Call us back tomorrow when this is all over, Don, uh, and I'll gladly play it for you then. No, no, that won't do. Don't worry. I think I can bring you around. Forrest? Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest. What in the and fuck? You'll find out. <sighs> She's fucking insane. Like, actually, this is well, insanity. Folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't do really I have, have a choice, get do we? If she's telling the truth... Why don't you go? Yeah, that's right! Why don't you go, bitch? Then, why don't you go and get it? It's one of Reggie's KFAM regulations. I can't leave the booth while we're on air. She is Peggy, actually so full of shit. Just, you can do it, okay? <sighs> Fine. You're a... Good fuck you, Peggy! You're so full of fucking shit, you dumb fucking- So why the fuck am I outside? You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man. Wait, I'm scared. Here, in the open. Where am I going? Hello? Oh, here it is. 
Here it is. The long ride home. Oh my god, I'm fucking scared. Oh, he's gonna come after me, isn't he? Whee! Of course. It locks behind me. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, something. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. Oh, here's a here's a fuse. Ah! Do you have to add to 70? Another fuse. Here's one more. Nope, it's not 70. So we need to find another one. We need to find another one. That's only 60. We need another 10 or 21. 20! Let's go! Peggy, you are a big bitch. You no good lying dirty skank. Let's move these around. Yeah. Okay, quick maths. Bingo! Bingo! We'll have to crouch. I could probably survive that fall. I'm here. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive. Oh, fucker. There's the beautiful key. Where the, where the fuck am I? Back to the studio now. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Who are all these people? Who, whose office was that? Yes. Peggy, help! You're not gonna believe this. Peggy, there's some shit going on and I'm scared. Dumb bitch. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive, the janitor? might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked behind me. Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found well, yes. in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor who you think is the creepy whistling man. Well, yes. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Wait, who are they? Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. Well, yes. That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, yes. and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're gonna have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. We need to work out who the next target is. There's four locations, right? Yeah. And four people. Sure. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. Oh. There must be some connections between the notes. She's such a fucking bitch, like. <laughs> so the four locations are power station, hospital, gas station, trailer park. Game day, March 1969. Okay, so whoever this is, this is Chuck Brody. He's gonna be at the game. He's gonna be at the game. Let's see, the lead engineer is responsible for Gallows Creek Harvest Festival. So that's gonna be engineer. I guess it's gonna be Aunt Williams. Call for donations to help Chuck Brody. Local doctor Kay Walker recommends getting local flu shop ASAP. So he's gonna be at the clinic, maybe? He's gonna be at the hospital, right? Something is eating me at Chuck. Former Gallows High football captain Chuck Brody suffered a career enduring injury as a victim of the festival disaster late last year. Someone tells me it's Chuck. There's a lot going on about Chuck here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna guess and say Chuck. How's it going? I'm ready. I'm ready. Peggy. I'm just gonna I'm just Are gonna say sure? it's Chuck. I don't We've know. We only got one shot at this. Let's do this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? I think it's Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? Oh, oh! to help him on his road to recovery, we are buying him lottery tickets. Lottery tickets, where do you get lottery tickets? The gas station? Let's try gas station. The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Big brain over here. 
Chuck Brody. Period. Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the whistling man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Forrest Nash. Listen, the whistling man's back. We found a list with your name on it and. Oh, God. It's today. The year I finally let myself forget. I. Forget what? Forget? Forget what? Forget. No, no, man. I gotta get out of here. Hmm. His foot tappings? I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck. <gasps> oh, oh. Jesus! It sounds like something blew up. The fuck? He's using bombs now? I. I. Is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on. We're getting a call. Hello? Chuck? Chuck! Forrest! The <gasps> whole goddamn gas station's gone up! Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. Period. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. Um, we don't even have a hospital in I this gotta town. I get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. What was that about today? Oh, Period. Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Period. <laughs> Let's blow this up. Careful with this next track, listeners. It's dynamite. Forest. Forest. There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. I fucking hate this Maybe bitch. start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. Here we are. Going back down in this creepy fucking basement. Ooh. Ooh, they got X's on their hmm. eyes. A key? Was this always here? Ga ga ooh la la. Oh! Wait, did we just leave this open from the outside? So, like, anyone can come in? So, where the fuck? Hey, Forrest! Ah! Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. What is that? Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. George Ballow, 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps, find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait, George Barrow? Who the fuck is that? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? <gasps> Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Oh, great. Be careful for it. Okay, what's down here? Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Oh. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. Drowning? The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. Not the rigor mortis. If I could only see what the fuck is going on. Oh, what's this? Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Mm. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stopping. Right. I don't think I like this. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. <gasps> oh god. Oh fuck, I'm scared. What the fuck? Oh god, I'm scared. Oh my god, I'm scared. If you're listening to this, <gasps> then I'm probably dead. 
is not going to believe this. Oh, another tape? It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where oh. he hit his head, was knocked out, and Oh, dropped. Peggy, I'm fucking scared. What the fuck? Peggy? What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. George, he was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just... It's your mother. It. Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds <gasps> Is it Dawn? Like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. <coughs> Is it Dawn? Drive someone to do that. <gasps> I'm not sure yet. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, oh his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. Oh God. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, <laughs> not a coroner. And not a 911 operator. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. <gasps> Maybe the whistly man. man. Maybe... Then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved and post just to death. Knock someone's eye out. The body? How weird. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded the doctor, uh, Doctor Sullivan. Oh, that's what the part I, I walked recording. out before that. Doctor Sullivan. <gasps> Wait, Virginia Sullivan? She was her caller from earlier. Well, then our caller was involved in a conspiracy around this boy's death. We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. Yeah. I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's <gasps> death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the whistling man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. No! Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. <gasps> to save them. To save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Cryptic ass. Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. <gasps> 
Do you think you found it? Wait, what? Found? I think there's gotta be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. What is this? Delivery notes. Starling security? Wait a minute. We did talk to that one guy about the security system, right? Oh, what's this? Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found. What have you found, Forrest? There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. They lie. July. Do you think you found everything? <sighs> I think so. Forrest, what's going on? I don't know. Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. He's a hitman. <sighs> Come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Three o'clock, oh, 0300. Thank God you're back, Forrest. What's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Well, you shut the fuck up. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. I'm nervous. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Fredman Plunker here? Who's this? Is it you? Goose? Sure. Plunker, it's Goose. Where's it moved to? This old lady's house. Oh, she's Virginia? pretty cool, though. Dude, she said we could raid her liquor cabinet if we stayed and protected mm, her. Smart on me of to course, click that. we're not drinking anymore. We're staying sharp in case that whistling turd turns back up. The old lady might need our help. Of course, man. Of course. Hey, could you put me on with the old lady? No. Should check if it's cool for me to drop by. Oh, there's that goose respect we love. <laughs> right. I'll grab her now. Uh, hello? Is this goose? Hey, <clears throat> hey uh, Dr. Sullivan. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm, I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Hmm. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. We need to talk. I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy, too. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought... Wait, I'm still a little confused. Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Should I say Clive? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the mm. first time. I don't know what I said then. Mm. I was oh, her husband? Forrest. Right? Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. This Virginia, is all live. It's okay. Clive all will live. be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. Why so certain? Why are you so certain Clive's the whistling man? Because he... All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them it's or making made sense now. or what. But we found them, and we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you stay quiet? I... All right. One she's about day, to, she's about to give us a tea. I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in and... He started making demands. 
to give over the reports? To falsify what I found? Of course I said no. But, well, when someone wants to make you do something, he had a pew pew to her they head. Use the carrot or the stick. Oh, what? For me, he used both. You see, my sister <gasps> is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment oh. if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, live on air, he'd beat me to within an inch of my oh. life. I don't know why he had me do it, but oh. my sister needed me. That is T. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. Virginia, thank you. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? For why? Why cover up these details? Why? We could try Sandra. Who the fuck what is that? What would Sandra know? I don't know, but we have to start somewhere. Who is Sandra? Anyway. Just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her so jazz So who is studio. Sandra? <gasps> um, what the fuck? Aha, uh -huh. Forrest, you're What through. the fuck? Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. By Forrest, of course. Heck, oh, I'm she was the first caller that we life. had. I'd say yes to just about anything you ask. Do you know why the whistling man she might wants have it. targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific mm. people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Don't play games. Damn it, Sandra. Don't play games. I don't know anything. Oops, wrong one. I... Oh, fuck! It's the wrong one! I... Oh, look at the time. Sure is late. I have to go. I'll drive home now or just... I thought he was going to be like drive. coy, like, don't play games, um, Sandra. Sorry. Like, how was I supposed to know his tone? Well... I might have gone How was I supposed to know his tone? A bit? All right, all right. Let's just move on. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts... He came off really aggressive. On what's going on tonight, please call in. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. It's Dawn. Dawn. Ah, I bet I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on. But please? Uh, never mind that now. Uh-oh. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Are you in danger? Are you in danger? I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. She's you. she's faking it. I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. Ooh. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. Why did she leave her house? to my apartment building. But this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Go elsewhere? Can you go somewhere else? Well, home is the safest place I can be. Please, the front gate requires an entry code to open. I need that code to get inside. Ooh, a code! Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment. I doubt any of your listeners live there. We're here? We don't have many neighbors. Oh, 
Right here. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. Shit. Noisy part of town? Sounds like a noisy part of town. It is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any... Uh oh! It's coming down the street. That was barking in a train. Force, please. I need Wait a minute. Need the code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. Oh, security system's name? What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says. <gasps> we saw that in the basement. Security four thousand keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six-digit number. Starling, huh? Starling Security four thousand, huh? Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. This oh, is yes. her apartment, and it's nowhere near a train. All right, folks. Here's a little hmm. tune for you all to enjoy. We have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. What was it? Was this right here? Oh, it's right here. Starling 4000. Here we go. User manual. Is she going after Ricky? <gasps> He's the one with the dog? Oh, wait. She's trying to open up the Ricky's rink, right? No, wait. What is it? He just got this installed. And she's not actually outside. We're helping her get in. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Don back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. There's no train station near. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? So we just figured out that she's lying to us. This is a train station. <gasps> She's Bri Ricky's roller. Oh my god. We are so smart, guys. We should give her the alarm test. Warning this will set off all security measures. Um, so the alarm test. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Uh oh. Is she? Ooh. Yeah, stay out! <gasps> Nobody disrespects Absolutely. the safety of the ring. Don't ever come back here again. <laughs> I'm calling the cops. That's oh. us. Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. Who him? That was the whistling man. <gasps> the alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Matt. It was a woman? He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. Gonna barricade that window. <gasps> my man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what oh. just happened. So Don was the whistling man. So the whistling man. Hey, man. Is a woman? Uh, I know. I can't believe it. I know. I, I can't. Who knew it. women could also she be villains? She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I knew she wasn't right. I knew she wasn't right. We knew it. Is that right, Sherlock? Well, yes. Why do you think she requested that song? Maybe she actually wanted it. I mean, maybe she actually wanted it. Could be her favorite killing song. Ugh, that's awful. So, what now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. 
Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Here okay, we go. you're live in three, two. Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Yes. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. <gasps> one who might manipulate oh you into letting her in before she attacks you. I am you. woman! Oh. More neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. More neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. Period. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light mm. on our killer. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, we had a call come in. Uh oh. Okay, folks, time to take a call. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Uh, what happened? Somebody's been stabbed. Can, can you tell me what happened? I thought we were done. We're at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. Reservoir? He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. Oh god. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Oh, and they just stabbed him. Oh. Was it a woman? Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where oh did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. What's your friend's name? What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named mm. Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding mm. heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you yeah, know. like... I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him. Me? We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. <laughs> Do either of you have any? No. no. Me neither. Uh, damn it. Far above my pay grade. Really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? We don't have a choice. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Wait, I get them comfortable. I need to write this down! Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right so now. So take it out? Uh, if anything, you should secure I'm it kidding. so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. 
It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I, I think, think we'll we be can okay. handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Oh. Keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the Why can't we just connect the two calls? Like, it. the fuck? Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. Peggy, are you writing this right. down? Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Me? Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? I hear. I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's I'm still here. Waiting. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. <laughs> what about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should no! I pull it out? No! No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? <laughs> I hate looking Slight at that Slight gag. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Leave the knife alone, right? All right. I, I think we need to leave that knife alone. All right. I'll just keep putting pressure on his stomach for now. Forrest, can I have a word? Now, bitch? Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right, give me a second. Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Is she dumb? Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. Like? You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. <sighs> Fucking Peggy. I promise. Okay, I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Could somebody help nearby? Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I never mind. Producer get so, getaway? How that does sounds KFAM's gay. First aid course help us. Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably. But I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. Oh my god! I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's I office. I hate her. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go on. Go on. It's sensitive information. So Reggie probably locked it in his safe. I thought we were done. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. Something's going on with Peggy. Did she not want to see us without her makeup on or something? That's why she's not coming out of the booth? Like, what's tea? Reggie. Remember, Reggie's junior's birthday is 9-10, not 10-09. Last year was a... Uh, is it 10-09? Looks like I need a four-digit Let's try 10-09. Nope, that's not working. What? Must be something else. Oh, huh. What is this? Could this be it? What is this? What's 1107? Takes place on 1107. Hmm. Takes place on 1107. Very important date for the town. Let's try 1107. 
Nice. Nice, period. Ooh, floppy disks. Personal file Nash. That's me. Wait, which one do we need? Barbara. Karen. It's Karen, right? Ah! What was that? I got the safe open. Now what? I got the safe open, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for in these files. We need to know who can do first aid. Oh. And we need them to be close to Nancy Drive. Let's try... Who's this? Barbara? Uh, she doesn't- she doesn't live close enough on the street. Let's, talk, let's do Carter Bradley. No, he doesn't live on that- okay, wait, maybe it's Karen. Let's see if it's John. He lives on Nancy Drive. John apparently has a bunch of medical equipment in his home that he produced, that he procured- that he, oh my god. That he procured from the military at the end of his service. Okay, so it's John! I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I? Hello? Oh. Is anybody there? Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to give him a rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? He's going into shock. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Casey, There's so much calm going down. on. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Keep him warm, right? Oh, elevate Jason's legs, right? Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing Period. to his vital organs. Got it. Oh my god, back. this is so much. I'm looking at my notes. Fuck you, Peggy. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. I still have some laundry next to me. I'll wrap him in some blankets. Just give me a second. Mm. Ah. Ah. Sorry. Sorry. Ah. Sorry. Sorry. I'm done. Okay, Jason. Just relax now, okay? Oh, he's scared. He's not doing well. Oh, God. Is he, is he gonna... Be strong for Jason. Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? We need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier. Who was it? It was John. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah. That sounds scary. And according to Reggie's notes. John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Uh, who the hell is this calling me? At? What time is it? John just in bed. John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Like everybody else. This is a medical emergency. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He, he's badly hurt and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. This is a man. medical what emergency. Kind of Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Casey, I'm going to need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Period, right. queen. We'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's gonna be all right. You're gonna love this next track. We've got another call coming through, too. Time to turn the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. 
I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh hey! Oh. Here too. What's on your mind? Hello to you both. What's on your mind, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Ooh. Info? Really? Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, <gasps> the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Keep on talking. Keep talking? What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. <laughs> man. I, I beat feet George out of there, bitch. There. <laughs> There was a whole lot of love, man. I've never heard it, that, Beefy. You know? What was her name? Ricky, please. What was her <gasps> name? Dawn? I never got her name, man. He just called her Bean. I, I didn't really know her before or, or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything Beefy you remember. Beefy meteorologist. <sighs> I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time, and then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And, and I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. Ooh. And uh, it wasn't your fault, Roller Ricky. Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad Wendy person. Wendy Williams. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, I'm done stimming. Took a long time to learn, but yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got mm. it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Please, I want to go home. For listening, man. I'll let you to it. <laughs> Night, Ricky. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious <laughs> bean, not the mysterious please bean. Call her. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in. But hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy. You're going to want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest. I'm glad I got <gasps> back through to you. It's Leslie. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? No. Oh. Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? I am. I'm driving back with an officer from Henderson now. <laughs> we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. Is help on the way, bitch? It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had right, no idea right. what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? Well, well yes. I, so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. 
Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. Great. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the Whistling Man is, we can't get him. Oh, great. Her. That's where you come in. What do you need, bitch? You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The Whistling Man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Oh, great. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. Oh. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. Oh, jeez. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll I'm radio scared. I'm gonna fuck this up. Them the plan is a go. Hopefully, the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. This has been really fun, though. I don't think this is gonna be easy. It's nice to think, Peggy, but I don't reckon Dawn is gonna give up without a fight. She probably won't give up without a fight. No. But neither will we. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. Oh. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John, is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. Yay! We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much! If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Absolutely. Tell Jason to get well soon from us. Whenever he's up we for We love you, Jason! Why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? The one and only! The one and only! I hope you're feeling better. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. Xanax. <laughs> oh. Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. Oh. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there. Why do you ask? Yes, the whistling man's still out there. Why do you ask? You know something about the whistling man, don't you? Yeah. I do. Can we talk about what happened earlier? Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. Hmm. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked Wait, what earlier, relation do they have? I forgot. His call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. <laughs> Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. Ooh. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail. What the fuck? A long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on. Like he'd never existed. And we're live! <laughs> well, who killed George, bitch? Who killed George that night? <sighs> Some of the guys on the football team no. had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. No. We decided to no. plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man oh. crash it. Was stupid. We each had a role. Dumbass. I was the stabbed friend. The 
The party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. Damn. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was... Nobody knows how dead. this man died. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean. Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her <gasps> Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? <gasps> what happened? Are we still on air? Mm -hmm. How do we get it back on? I don't, uh, oh, we can use the emergency generator. Great, now I have to go down to the fucking basement. We picked it up a while ago, in case you ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. Right. Now it's dark and scary. I don't like this. Jinnaweda, is it in here? <sighs> far back corner. Why is this station so big? Is this it? That must be it. Boom! We've got power! Boom, bitch! <gasps> the whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. <gasps> no? What was that? Who... Who... Who was that? Hexters! What? Why is it locked? Peggy! What? Why is it locked? What? Why is it locked? Oh, Why no. do you say that three times? Peggy! Where'd you go? <gasps> Shut the fuck up. No way. This can't be happening. Uh, hello? What do you want? What do you want? Good to talk to you again. It's Dawn. You know, I've really enjoyed our chats tonight. I guess we've had some moments. Oh, God. My favorite was when Ricky ran you out of the ring. Period. Ha. You sure did get me then, Forrest. Where's Peggy? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most I'm of it. I'm scared. What do you mean? Wait, I have to wait. I'm supposed to be like playing it cool with her, right? How am I supposed to be talking to Dawn? What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well, huh? I thought we'd end tonight's whistling man special <gasps> with a special guest. Is that Peggy? The one who started it all. Uh, let me take that out of your mouth and. You crazy bitch! Let me go! Teddy? Welcome to the air, Mr. Oh. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well... What? He knows he'll get it. Then who's here? Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallant's Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. Nice to meet you. Who is this man? Don't mind him. He's just shy. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I forgot about that, Forrest. Hugging <laughs> my sweet boy away like an animal. Hang on. Did you Wait, see what? Barrel? Then are you? Let me just get this mask off. <sighs> Damn uncomfortable thing. I'm confused. I'm going crazy wearing this. Ah, there we 
Miguel. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh. Uh, well, it sure has been years since I last saw George's her. George's girlfriend? Oh. oh. God damn it. Not Don, huh? Marie Campbell. So, not Don, huh? No. Not Don. What are you going to... Uh, Ooh. Uh, everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. Cover up a murder? He killed George that oh, night. Oh, I knew it. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Uh, Ooh. You're gonna talk when I talk to you. Ooh. Not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest... Bean is Don is Marie! gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. I'll do it. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night Wait, I'm George nervous. Murdered? murdered? Oh, I'm nervous. Listen, I... Oh. 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 <laughs> I said you speak when you're spoken to. <laughs> kind of ate for that one. Now, I know you've done some good work tonight and piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. I can do that. Interview you. Okay, guys. All right. Uh, lock in, lock that. in. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. I'm scared. <laughs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find oh, out Jesus. where Marie is, we're gonna is, do like a million things. Then this can end. Teddy, we'll start okay. with you. Just uh, talk me I'm through scared. what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was twenty years ago. I'll say, uh, hit him, Marie. Hit him again, Marie. <laughs> what the hell? God damn it! Okay, our first team party was coming up, and when I saw the date it was scheduled for, Ooh. I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Tell me why that night. What made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. Wait, you mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. Teddy's spilling everyone's want tea. I him to hurt his chances in life. So I helped him keep himself together. It sounds like he's reading a script. You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About Midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man, hmm. screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Hmm. Teddy must have told him the plan. What's gonna make her, like, talk and explain more? Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't hmm. tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. 
It was just a stupid prank. Mm. Hit him, Marie. Hit him again, Marie. Oh, oh God. Yeah. You mean George think Jason had been murdered? He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but... I know this man is getting so bored. Separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then... I don't know how he snuck up on me, but... The whistling man grabs me. I scream. And he starts laughing. Tell you it's, it's just a joke. So who's the original uh, whistling man? I can stall for time here. How did you feel? How did you feel in that moment? I felt like... Nothing was real. I felt small. And confused. And... Who's under the mask? Who was under the mask, Marie? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Oh. Chuck Brody. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up. At the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy. What happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George oh. fell off Whistling Point. Why did he fall? Why did he fall, Teddy? You just you pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man too, and I didn't push him. God damn it! I just so there's a million there Whistling Men. He kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, uh -oh. he would have realized. Ugh. You bitch! Ooh. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. Even if you didn't push him. Even if you didn't push him, you still chased him to his death. I can't be blamed. Someone not getting Smack a him. I think Marie would disagree. But if you really felt that way, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, of course. And then governor. And then. Who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Oh. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? Not a blip. He wasn't a blip. He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... You never found his body, Marie? I looked all night. Jogger found him the next morning, washed up on the river. Instead of telling the truth, she lied. She said she found him in the reservoir. Our jazz runner, Sandra Sharp. Everyone was Ooh. in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... Fake report? Uh, I only heard the tapes. You'd be disgusted by it. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... Even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried the whole town was in on it. I 
even went to the newspaper. But no, that coward killed the, the town of 14 people. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. You've been through hell. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. Never should have started. You shouldn't have pushed my door down the cliff. You should have been punished. It's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here. Where George and I first met. Uh oh. Before he joined your football team. Where where is she? Well, right after. Wait, where did she say they were? Wait a sec. The football field? I think it's the football field, right? Uh-oh, why is he coming to me? Okay, Jim? Gallows Creek High. In the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes. Oh, here. thank God. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So. Ooh. Marie? Where? Peggy! Teddy? You gotta help me. I... Ooh. Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. Ooh. It's been so long since I've seen your face. Peggy getting her comeuppance. I'm afraid you wouldn't come. <laughs> Marie! Oh my god. I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Peggy, what's happening? Why are you even there? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? What? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out... That... My sister ah! is the Whistling Man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me. Now why does this man continue to look at us? We need you on the radio. And I just... You should have said. You should have said something. You should have told me. I know, okay? I should have. But I didn't imagine this situation then, so just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No, they told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... So sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad Ooh. I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well, I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Oh. The next best thing? The next best thing? Do you mean? Someone has to pay <gasps> for what they did. Murray, please. Mom and dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I can prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Is there like photos of her? Card? <gasps> it's this! Marie, Peggy never forgot about you! Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, she kept oh. it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. Well, I. Period. Oh! No! Frederick! No! Oh, oh, oh! Ah! Oh, not the way he went like that. We have two wounded and we're in pursuit of the suspect. <laughs> Look at the way he ran out like he's... Forrest! Leslie! How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. Can I get the fuck out of here? I'll be okay. God, Marie! Hey, officer! I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. 
now. Let me the fuck out! Nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Whew. Oh my god. <sighs> well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. Oh my god. I can't believe we did that. Check on Peggy. This is Ben. Forrest Nash. Good. Let's make tomorrow better. Let's make tomorrow better. Okay, so we didn't do that bad. We didn't do that bad. Only seven of them died. Wow, you guys. Wait, that game was so fun. You guys, that was Killer Frequency. Please let me know how you liked it in the comments below. And if you have any more scary games you want me to play, please let me know. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.